In today's agenda, we will briefly, I'll briefly skim through the executive summary, what this project is about. I'll uh, describe the business case, uh, what is this solution for, what business problem does it solve. I'll give you a brief overview of the solution architecture, tech stack, and we will uh, dive deep into the methodology. And the fourth step, intro to financial theory, um, it's, it's very, very crucial step because there is a lot of financial context in uh, modeling the uh, stock market trend. After introduction of methodology, I will show you the actual demo that is, which is already deployed on the GCP cloud. Um, you can interact with it in a, in a way, sort of, and we will close the session with the discoveries, implications discussion and Q&A. So let's proceed to the team, meet the team. Uh, Andrei Rishko inherited project ownership from Anton Weisbord and was helping us throughout the way and guiding us through the, all the technicalities and the business value of, of the project. Tatiana Platki provided us uh, with uh, valuable support and guidance on uh, very specific methodologies and approaches of, of machine learning and uh, data analysis. And Alexander Dudnev and myself, Alexei, we were the one who were actually doing the, doing, doing the project. So again, brief summary. So what is it all about? Let's, let's dive into details. Uh, we applied, essentially we applied uh, machine learning uh, model for near to the real time prediction of the stock market, stock market trend. And by stock market, I mean um, the price change of public stocks of the select big tech companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Tesla. And essentially we trained several machine learning models and put them into ensemble. We trained them on the news articles to produce a score of a trend. So if score produced by machine learning models uh, is, is high enough, it corresponds for the positive trend prediction. Uh, the one close to zero for stands for negative and everything around uh, 0 0.5 is considered as either undefined or natural trend prediction. And this is like, this problem is we, we decided to go for the binary classification problem for uh, simplicity because it's already not a trivial task to model a stock trend because so many people tried before us and so many, so many didn't succeed very well. And we decided to shape the problem in a way that dependent variable uh, is an actual trend, like uh, upwards, downwards, or natural trend, and the vectorized news article uh, as a set of independent features. But on um, this, we will discuss details later. And now I'd like to proceed with the business case. Again, what, what's, the, what's the problem? What is the exact goal we had in mind and what, what problem? Uh, that this thing solve. So as I just mentioned, predicting stock prices has always been uh, like a like a dream or uh, dream of. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, pardon. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think someone is cutting in. Um, all right, so. Predicting stock price has always been uh, like a dream of many generations of stock market traders, and not only them, but also retail investors, institutional investors, you name it. Um, we decided to bring the dream one step closer to reality by introducing this FNI, Financial News Impact Measurement uh, app, because what we observed, there is not, not no out of the box solution for for this kind of so for for this kind of problem, and over the long period of time, the problem of, of predicting stock market, stock market price changes has been like researched from so many different angles. And what changed today is that we have like uh, available machine learning algorithms and all of these uh, fancy technologies that we can apply to solving real time uh, real world problem. And, identification of factors which contribute to price changes is actually a key to unleashing the, uh, the predictive power of our model, as I will show you later. 
So I can, so we distinguish among like three, three business case, three use cases for this type of app. So first of all, uh, as I just mentioned, it's a dream of every, of every trader, but not, but nowadays, 80% uh, of all trades are done on autopilot. 80% of all trades of all transactions on stock and capital market is done automatically by algorithms. And one certain type of algorithm is called HFT, it's high frequency trading. Um, it, and what, what happens uh, is that given the input of near, near to real time information or some vector of features, the decision is, is made almost instantaneously. And FNI can, can certainly help with it because it provides some non-trivial source, non source of data. Secondly, risk management, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if, if, if our ML models uh, can reliably predict, and, and they do, uh, stock market trend for the following short-term period, it means that knowing that will happen in the future, the investors will, will be prepared to embrace it. So FNI app can, be, can become an enhance, enhancement for the quantitative risk management system, QRM systems uh, of institutional investors and small mutual funds. Also, another fairly large, fairly large use case is uh, equity research. What equity research is, is uh, it's, it's, a, it's a profession that is very often pictured in, in movies like a wolf from Wall Street. It's a whole bunch of traders sitting in a, sitting in a building and what, what they're doing, they're essentially doing research, equity research. They're picking stocks. Um, by picking stocks, I mean they crunch a lot of numbers to identify the stocks that is mispriced, which means the, the equity costs uh, higher or lower than the market quote. And if, if the equity, uh, if, if the fair value of, of a stock is lower, it's a good idea to, to to short sell the, the, uh, the stock on the market for a higher price and buy it back later on and make a profit out of it. So these are three use cases that we had in mind. And um, let's proceed with the solution overview. So FNI is built around machine learning algorithm, actually several of them, which makes the two day ahead predictions for selected ticker by reading and analyzing financial news and ticker stands for just a company. It's just this symbol for, symbol for a stock price, which is quoted on the uh, stock exchange. Like for Apple it's A double, double PL, for Google it's uh, G double OG and, and, and so on. Um, FNI consists of several modules, each responsible for handling specific tasks. Like it automatically collects data uh, in, a, in a form of uh, news articles from the New York Times uh, API. It prepares news, pre-processed text uh, to ship it to the machine learning model. Um, the cherry on the, on the top of the cake is the interactive user interface with user-friendly visualizations of, of predictions. Um, the modular architecture of the of the app makes it like, nearly infinitely scalable for predicting trends of almost any publicly traded assets. We decided to focus on five of them, on five very, very precise ones, the big tech companies, as I mentioned, like Google, Microsoft, Tesla, and so on. But uh, this app can be expanded by uh, models for predicting not only stocks, but also currencies, indices, ETFs, and, and commodities. Um, multiple sources of news or other data feeds can be integrated into the app, not only the ones that we used, which is pretty good, actually. Uh, so we can do it in a matter of days, if not hours, to like, leverage predictive power of the model and give more context, which is very important, give more context to our predictions. Uh, this is a tech stack that we used. So the, <clears throat> the core module is built on a, on a TensorFlow. We have a neural network model, which uh, makes the, solves the classification problem, which classifies the news article as a positive or negative or, or neutral. Um, for storing all these uh, results and news articles, we use PostgreSQL, uh, 
Postgres uh, QL. Uh, NLTK is self-explanatory modules for those who are working with natural language processing. So this is like go to like go to library for text cleaning, vectorization, and performing all the transformation on uh, text. IBM Watson is uh, is is a curious uh, curious member of of our of our tech stack. Uh, essentially, what IBM Watson stands for it's uh, it's an AI which provides the semantics and emotional scoring of the news articles and we decided to include it in our model ensemble to provide users with more data as we'll see later in a, in a demo. So everything is deployed on a Google Cloud platform and the user interface is essentially Plotly Dash. Uh, everything is neat and self-explanatory. Self okay, so let's proceed with the, the biggest part, methodology. My favorite one. So before we even begin, it's crucially important to make a step back and reflect on the object of modeling because modeling is not about crunching numbers and achieving high scores on a, on a test sample. It's, it's something more, especially if, it's, if, if it is related to uh, predicting uh, such fundamental things and such ambiguous things, both fundamental and ambiguous things as a, as a stock price or, uh, or stock market trends. We, for this project to succeed, we had to establish a rationale or a scientific foundation of what is it exactly we are trying to model, um, what the fundamental objective is that actually solves our business problem. Uh, for instance, yeah, like uh, the impact. What, what do we mean by the impact? So we have the news that is published and it somehow uh, change affects the, the price of a stock. So there is a lot of caveats in, in such intuitive way of thinking and we really need to establish this scientific foundation to avoid uh, the spurious correlation or try to model the uh, dependence of apples from, from oranges. <clears throat> I'll give you a very brief introduction uh, to the modern financial theory and how currently everything works. Okay, so prior to, the, prior to 2013, everything was very simple. There were financial models that were like very, very straightforward. Well, they were pretty sophisticated algorithms, how to price equity, how to price a security, how to find a fair value of, of, the, of, of the stock. Uh, but in, uh, 2000, in 2013, something very, something very unprecedented took place. Two people, simultaneously won the prize in economics. These two gentlemen you see on the screen. Not only that, but their arguments were completely polar. The Dr. Eugene Fama stands for the efficient market hypothesis, uh, which is like a quantitative, bi quantitative basis of the financial theory, advocating that all participants of financial markets behave rationally and have enough mental and professional capacity to do financial modeling for uh, data-driven decision-making. Essentially, everyone knows what they're doing and, and everyone is using exactly the same uh, financial models for, for decision-making. For, for decision uh, on the other hand, uh, there is an emerging economic thought called behavioral economics and one branch of it called behavioral finance, which is more, more quantitative. And it states that market participants market participants have actually very little idea of how to price assets correctly because models are as good as they, uh, as they, prove, as, as they perform over time. Thus, uh, according to Dr. Schiller, uh, market participants are full, uh, like they're, they're making irrational decisions which are full of biases and mental shortcuts. Just to give you a background on the state of financial financial theory. And it's really important because if we assume that Mr. Schiller is correct, then our modeling doesn't make any sense, absolutely. What we need to model in, in case if Robert Schiller is right, uh, we need to do some time series analysis. We need to infer the evolution of price from price itself, not from exogenous factors. However, we decided to proceed with the statement of Eugene Fama, uh, efficient market hypothesis. And it says that essentially stock prices incorporate 
uh, all the available information. There are several, several forms, and we stick to the semi-strong form. So essentially, all public information, we, we consider all public information as the news articles, essentially. So there is an information that is published, people read some equity reports or some shifts in strategies of, of companies or some new product developments and people react, people make decisions whether it's, it's a good idea to uh, proceed investing or buy or maybe sell stock or maybe restrain for, for doing anything. So this is our basis for, for, our, for our methodology. Okay, so there are three components of, of, the, of the model. So first of all, we have, we have dependent variable. It's the trend. Stock market trend. What is it exactly that do we mean by saying stock market trend? We define it. Uh, we define the trend as the significant positive or negative change of the stock price. And for the change of stock price, the change of stock price we assume as a simple moving average uh, of the adjusted close price. So essentially, what you see on the graph on on the right is the distribution of the uh, returns on Apple stock over some, some period of time. And the problem of predicting the trend or inferring the trend from this type of distribution is that uh, this distribution is almost, almost normal. It's, it's uh, median is very, very close to zero, which creates a problem. What's the problem? Uh, so to distinguish between positive and negative trend, which isolates around zero, is not a trivial task. It's, it's not a trivial task to model positive or negative trend prediction out of, uh, out of the news articles. So what we did, we, uh, for the training purposes, we essentially removed this uh, part in, in, the, oops, in the middle around, no, 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 no. That's too far. Okay, so we trained our model on the extreme cases, like from minus 10% return to let's say minus five or something like this. It, it really depends on the volatility of the stock. Apple stock is very, is very resilient to volatility spikes, so it tends to isolate around zero. It doesn't exhibit any trend, so there is nothing to model. So we selected like, uh, polar sides of, of the trend for, for positive with some meaningful impact, meaningful direction of a, of a, of a stock price. And for negative, same, same logic applies to negative, essentially. So let's move on to our independent variables. So we model, we model the stock price trend out of the basically test. Okay, how do we do it? First of all, we, we collect the data. Not all data works. We tried multiple sources and uh, other data scientists tried before us just to find some open source uh, feed of news or selection of news like on Kaggle data sets or in, in some or, or scrap news from not very reputable uh, sources, which often solicit their readers into purchasing or uh, making some transactions with a specific, uh, specific security. They want to push you. So we decided to proceed with a reputable source of, uh, source of news. It's New York Times. Um, not only that, not all news matters. Imagine if there is a news article posted about some agriculture in, in the US. Uh, it has absolutely nothing to do with Apple company or Microsoft or, or Google. So we had to refine the selection of news which we select for, for, for modeling. Um, we did this uh, using regular expressions uh, with uh, some words that, uh, keywords that absolutely necessary uh, related to Apple, like iPhone, MacBook, uh, Apple itself or the Apple Incorporated and so on. So this is a cloud word of the initial data set we used for training uh, to, to predict the uh, trend of Apple stock. 
here we proceed with the text preprocessing. It's pretty self-explanatory, like very, very standard pipeline for text to lower, uh, cleaning text, removing stop words, um, tokenization. Um, we used, I think we used bigrams and for, other, for some other stock, we used three grams because they, they perform better. And you see very different cloud work. Uh, also, crucially important step, which made everything works and models perform a lot better. We uh, essentially, we end up with the vocabulary of over 60K words given that there is only like 40k words in an in a English dictionary, we end up in including bigrams, including all the proper nouns, we end up with such huge dictionary. The problem with such huge dictionary for binary classification purposes is that there are so many words uh, which overlap and they do not do you any good to, to, to distinguish between positive and negative trends. So we select like top I think it was one to 5,000 words, which appear in articles attributed to positive and negative trends. Um, we just remove them. And this is clean, clean dictionary. So uh, you do not see here any iPhone mentioning or Apple because it, it just meaningless. We already know that uh, these articles about uh, Apple products or, or the company itself. Um, we proceeded with text vectorization, and this is something that you can find. I left the link. This uh, this is modeling pipeline for text classification, kindly provided by uh, Google developers. It's like three or four years old, and it performs it performs very well. Because prior to this pipeline, we tried a lot of pre-trained dictionaries. Uh, not only just pre-trained dictionaries, we tried uh, specific dictionaries for analyzing uh, financial market sentiments, uh, which, like, which were trained and received a lot of attention in uh, science communities, but they, for some reason, were not applicable to our purposes because they were trained on K K10 forms. It's uh, annual reports, which are a lot more technical than uh, just news for a general public. So it didn't work for us. And also the, the vocabularies were fairly small, around 5,000 5, words, which is not, which is not great for uh, such a diverse text classification problem. So following the steps of, um, of text, text classification pipeline, we ended up with the reducing our vocabulary, which we had like enormous vector of features after tokenization and vectorization and training models on such large vectors uh, doesn't do you any good because you're just using a lot of computational resources for um, features for the majority of features which do not contribute by any mean to the target variable. So it's good idea to reduce your, to reduce your vocabulary like from two or three million uh, features to something, some, some manageable size. Um, for different stocks, different size matters because there are more news about Apple and Microsoft than about Tesla, let's say. Uh, different number of uh, K best features works. Um, oh yeah, by the way, this exact pipeline you could see, you could find it uh, in one of the spring session uh, provided by Ognjen Tanovich. Uh, that was very useful and very user friendly. I highly recommend you to revisit to, to revisit that session. So after we prepared everything, we are happy with our, our features. We are happy with articles. We are certain what 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 are we modeling. We are we are we are happy with how we matched the target variable in in time to the articles that are published. We proceed with modeling pipeline. So. The modeling pipeline consists of exactly three models. The first model is one of the most important. So it actually performs a classification. Imagine if you have um, at the same day, uh, multiple articles were, were published about exactly, same, about exactly same thing on exactly same website, New York Times. So which one of these articles do you consider uh, 
inferring the trend from like the article that was published the latest like close to the uh closing the market close to evening in the midday um this model scores essentially all all articles attributed to the same date to the same stock price um, and it turned out to be a fairly weak predictor, even though it ex exceeded the initial, the initial acceptance criteria of the project. We just aimed at something like better than 50% because um, Microsoft team and as well a person uh, from the towards data science, they try to approach exactly the same problem. Uh, but the results that they obtained were somewhere around like 0 0.55, 0 0.5 for F1 score. And we already have like 0.62 on the test sample. This is test sample, and the graph illustrates the positive, positive uh, tangent line, which advocates that we are on the right track because the the composite score on the right, the higher the score, the uh, the higher the the probability that the uh, positive that the positive trend will emerge. And we benchmark it to the return on the y-axis, actual return, which took place in, in two days after, after prediction. So we are on the right track. However, it's, it's not enough. We decided, to infer, we decided to infer the trend prediction from the all articles that were published on the same day. For these purposes, we decided to aggregate them and build up another model. Like, which takes the score of the neural network model and produces one single score, which we call composite score. Uh, we also removed uh, all the uncertainty, essentially all, all the articles that uh, produce all, all the scores, all the articles with score around 0.5, yeah, like from 0.4 to 0.6, which do not contribute to like, explaining anything uh, we just remove them. So it's essentially a three-factor classification problem. Uh, we took the, if, if let's say we had like seven articles published on the same day, we take um, minimal, maximum, and median score, not mean. We take um, median article scores, and on the top of the screen, you can see a coefficients, very nice, 11, 9, uh, and, and 10. And um, we observed a significant, a significant boost in, in model performance. Actually, for Tesla, for Tesla, we managed to achieve as high as 0.95 uh, of F1 score, which is enormous. We, nobody expected it, and we saw that there must be something wrong with our models because it's just, it's just unbelievable. So after we've done all this, all these models that I just showed you, all this pipeline, it doesn't tell you, it, it tells you like what the stock market, stock price trend is gonna be uh, in, a, in a two days from now, but it doesn't give you a context whatsoever. It doesn't explain you why is it the case that this article, uh, this article is like positively charged or negatively charged. Um, for the purpose of giving more context to a user, on the sentiment and emotion of the of the article, we decided to use IBM Watson AI, <clears throat> which uh, takes the essentially text as the input and returns the list of dictionaries you see on the right. Uh, it extracts the keywords uh, with the key text like uh, best smartphone plan, main costs, new plans, and it scores them on a sentiment relevance to the article basis and four emotions or five emotions associated with, with this keyword. In this case, it's uh, both uh, like B gram and three grams as a, as a keyword. So this is how it looks like. And we'll see the live version in a moment. Um, the outcome of all these three models is that we have like uh, a prediction of positive, negative, and neutral trend on the bottom, benchmarked to the actual which took place. Uh, we built around this model, we wrapped this model into minimalist uh, but pretty interface based on uh, 
dash plotly uh, for user interactions and this is how it looks okay so i think it's it's good time to proceed to the live version here it is let me know if you see the screen i i hope you do so here we have the box for selecting ticker currently there are only three like let, let's say apple yeah and we select the date for which we want a prediction and on the news on this on this tab underneath we can see all the news uh, that were published on the march 16th and here we have the indicator which is like stands for negative or positively charged news and on, on the top of the screen we see the ensemble the, the product of the of the ensemble of news which stands for the predicted trend is negative it says if we click on show details it will show us the output uh, from the uh, from the IBM Watson like what are keywords uh, why is it the case that we label this uh, new this news article as as negative we can the user can can read some uh, some brief uh, some intro to the article and can click the link to to proceed to the original article on the New York Times California today here you go and it it essentially works for for all news for all all companies like Microsoft same thing we see that both news are, are likely have, have no impact or I define impact because they are somewhat irrelevant. Yeah, like Microsoft sees this website, it traces to Iranian, Iranian hackers. So what? It doesn't impact price, according to our model. Um, so yeah, let's let's go back to the summary part, discoveries and implications that we that we encountered during this project. First of all, the project took us around two to three months to accomplish. And believe me or not, but predicting stock trends is not a trivial task, especially from a single variable as a news article. We could, we could build some more sophisticated uh, trend prediction pipeline with time series analysis uh, or, or some like real world uh, financial classics models for, for predicting stock price or equity valuation, but we decided to stick with our objective. Can we, can we measure the impact of a news, of financial news on financial assets? And the answer is, yes, we do. The caveat that we discovered is that as long as we're trying to model a time series using static model, it doesn't really work that way because uh, we experienced a lot of troubles when the COVID-19 emerged and there were only very, there were very few articles about it. Like in, uh, in February, it, it was localized in, in China and in, in some other, other countries. So nobody saw and nobody anticipated the impact of, of COVID-19. So our models, um, I'm afraid, uh, has to be regularly retrained to to append its, its vocabularies with uh, new data, new keywords, which stands for something positive or, or something negative as a, as a pandemics. Yeah, certainly, as I mentioned, pre-trained vocabularies do not work. Uh, who knows why they, they just do not work. We, we tried pretty much everything that we, we could find pre-trained for vectorization, for semantics. Uh, if you want to do something good, do it yourself. That's, that's, the, that's the takeaway. And good news, efficient market hypothesis holds because if it didn't hold, we couldn't model, we couldn't model anything. Because in this case, it would mean that uh, news do not have impact on the uh, price evolution, but something else, have. something like uh, human decision-making or some fundamental factors which are not considered to be publicly available. So that's it for now.